The first thing I want to do on the project is add this background style in. Now, where did I get this photo from? Well, I downloaded this from a site called Unsplash. You can download this stuff for free as long as you credit the person, here's Oleg. And what I can do is actually download this for free and then it goes to my downloads. Now this is usually quite a large photo. We don't want to put too large of a photo on our web page because it gets a little bit slow to load. We don't need this kind of like 4,000 pixel image. So what I did is I put this inside Figma and I kind of, you can see here, this is a certain size. I've made my artboard, this 2,000 pixels by 1500 pixels, roughly the kind of size of the page as it should be. And then I've exported it as a JPEG. Now I've done this for you already. It's in this downloads folder called project one. If I open this up, I've got lots of links in my content.txt, just a text file. You can open up and see what's going on in here. And in here, you can see the link there if you want to download it yourself. Now in my assets folder, I've got quite a few things in here. Now, for now, what I just want is my background.jpg. We'll talk about these other files a little bit later. So I need to add to my project this background image that I've made. So I'm just going to quickly take my background.jpg and upload it. And what we should see is this image appear. Now, I want this image to be pulled into the style of the page. So because this is a style, I want to put this in my style.css. Anything to do with how it looks is always to do with style.css or any kind of CSS file. Now, where do I want this on the page? Well, this lives across the entire page. This is filling up the entire bit of the, the, the site. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this background image or this background.jpg to my page. So the first thing I'm going to do actually is just remove some of the default styles. So at the moment, We'll keep font family Arial in here and the font size and the line height. We'll come back to that a little bit later. Background color, yep, white kind of default. And then what we're gonna do is change the text color to be a little bit darker, this hash 0000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 which is pure black. So I'm gonna apply this. I don't want any margins and widths on my page for the final one. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So I'm just going to remove that for now. But what we'll see if we look back at the page is this is in the top corner because there's no margin to the page and it's the entire width by default. So the first thing we want to do is add a background image to this page. Now I like to kind of pair things up just based on kind of CSS rules. We've got a background color. I also want to add a background image. So I'm going to split these two up. And what I'm going to put in place is a background dash image. And then what do we want to pick? Well, if I click here, I've got my background dot JPEG. I've got a JPEG that I want to put as the background. So now if we just quickly look at our preview, we'll see something that looks like this. Now we can see here that it kind of goes off the page. It's a little bit too big. So the first thing I want to do is size this down a little bit. So I want this background image to just cover the entire page. So underneath here, what I'm going to add in is a background dash size. And I'm going to put in cover. I want this background to cover the entire uh, page. And the reason for that is if I kind of resize this down, uh, you might notice a little problem if I start to resize things down. This repeats everywhere. So the next thing I want to do is actually remove this repeat so it doesn't keep going down the page. So how do I do that? Well, let's add in one more thing. Let's add in a background dash repeat. We don't want it to repeat. The default is to repeat and tile. We're going to get rid of that. Again, I can click here and pick no repeat. I just want it to be once. So now what we'll see is this, but now we've got this white edge. Well, also it's in the top as well. So if I kind of resize it down, what is going on? Well, we'll come to that in a second. Let's move this image into the middle of the page. We want this right to be in the middle. So let's add that in. Underneath here, we're going to add a background position to be, or well, we want it to be in the center across and the center up and down. So the center and the center in both directions. So now what we'll get is something that looks like this. Now, what you might notice is this doesn't really go to the end of the page. And the issue that we've got is we've only really got content that lasts to this part of the page. So basically the center point at the moment is these two lines middle. So we just, this is the entire page. The kind of line goes to here right now, which isn't really what we want. The center point for this image at the moment is actually just here between these two lines. 
because that's all of our content. So what we're going to do is add in height to this whole page to make this background be in the middle of the page. So one more thing, we're going to add a height of 100 VH. Now VH just means the viewport height. How big is the browser? Well, we want it to be 100% of the height of this page. So what we'll get now is something that looks more like our final version. And if you can see, as we kind of zoom in and out and kind of make things a little bit smaller, we have this image always being in the middle of the page. Now, what we want to do as well is move these kind of two tags into the correct places. Now, at the moment, this is kind of in this corner and this one's in this corner. And if I change the size of the page, they'll move and stick to those corners. So what we want to do is stick these two things in the right place. We want to stick this header tag in the top left corner and our footer tag in the bottom left corner. So I don't want to do this on the body of the page because this counts for everything. What I want to do instead is add this to the header tag. So I want to select this header tag with playground and pin this to the right place. So underneath here, I need to select my header. And my curly brackets means do this. So on my header, do these styles to the header. What styles do I want to pick? Well, I'm going to fix this into the right position with position fixed. Where do we want it to be fixed to? Well, I want it to be fixed to the top left corner. Now, what does that actually mean? How far from the top left corner do you want to go? Well, I'm going to put this in the top corner by 44 PX. No space in PX, so 44 px straight away and also in the left as well 44 px so what we'll see now is this goes here now this text goes up because we take this playground tag out of the flow of the page we're pinning it into a certain area but what we want to do is pin this footer tag in a certain area as well so hopefully you can see where this is going to go instead of the header tag we want to change i'm going to move this down the footer tag and I want to do something to that so I'm going to use these curly brackets curly brackets in CSS just mean do something to this so footer we're going to do this to this footer tag what do we want to do well similar to what we've got with header we're going to stick it with position fixed into the bottom corner 64 and the left by 64 now, of course, there is right as well. If you want to put it in the bottom right, you'd put bottom and then right instead. And what we get now is something that looks a little bit closer to our final page. Next, what we want to talk about is the typography. How do we actually add some styles? How do we add some fonts? And how do we add some more, more kind of style to this, I suppose? All of this is to do with CSS, all to do with how it looks.